million years ago, I was, oh, you're Mary and Tom's son. Oh, you're fill in the blank, Sharon, Karen, Tommy, Monica's uh, no, brother. No and then, uh, then you were, oh, you're, let me see if I can get this right, uh, Diane, Amy, Wendy, uh, Colleen, um, Adele's boyfriend. And then, and then, oh. <laughs> <laughs> then, it was like, oh, you're the Joe who went to Alaska. Oh, you're the Joe who adopted James. Oh, you're Joe with the triplets. Oh, you know, oh, you're Frankie's dad? Oh, I know your mom. She's on the internet a lot. Yeah. Well, when I would tell that story, I would always add that, yeah, no, what I always wanted was Joe. You're the one who won the lottery. And it's like, uh, it. there's a backstory to that. Um, as you all probably know, I was born and raised a good Irish, Southern Irish Catholic boy, and it was something driven into my head at a very early age. And I would, it, 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 I didn't think it made a lot of difference, but it was that if you ask in the name of Jesus Christ, it'll be granted. And when there were dark times, and there have been some really dark times, uh, let's see, James, when we lost you, uh, TJ, when you were two days old and you looked like you were shuffling off the moral coil, uh, <laughs> Megan, let's leave it at um, you know, uh, pediatric brain surgery. Oh, yeah. um, I had a big head. Hasn't gone away. In those really dark times, I would find myself defaulting back to saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, please don't let this go south. Please. And I would hear a voice in my head that says, don't worry about it. It's okay. And look at you now. Well, there was other really, really dark times. And it was when money was scarce. No, hell, money was non-existent. And I would find myself defaulting back to what I was taught as a child, saying, oh, she's the name. Please let me win the lottery. Please, just so this pain can go away. And then, good job. And Frankie rolled up on the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> and that same voice that said, don't worry, it'll be okay, said, you've already won the lottery. Because you are my golden ticket. All of you are. Bravo. Um, okay. Um, so, because you saved me from myself, um, I would have never been where I am now without you. And there was a point in time I told your mother, this isn't where I saw myself when I was in my middle-aged angst. Um, <laughs> that, you know, this isn't where I saw myself. This isn't what, this isn't where I was. I was a very stupid man with very limited imagination. Um, and I thank you so much for who you are. So I want to share something with you that a great Texas philosopher named Lee Wiley Hubbard <laughs> once told me. Um, it's in a song about his tripper girlfriend and his gold top Les Paul. And um, it's the very last line is, um, I can't remember, no, the very last line is, the days you keep your gratitude greater than your expectations that's a good day. So let me repeat, the days you keep your gratitude greater than your expectations, that's a good day because if when you're, and you will find yourself in your life holding on to that saddle, riding the white pony, and you're just like hell's breaking loose around you, remember, you always have me, you always have your mother, you always have each other, and look around. Unfortunately, I got stolen today, but may the road arise to meet you. Do you remember this? May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine upon your face. May the rain fall upon your fields gently. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand.
<laughs> it takes a village, and all of you are the village. And all of you have had a part in their lives and in our lives. And we cannot thank you enough for your support and your love and your caring and your tenderness and always being there. I remember the day we went to the doctor to find out if I was pregnant after trying and trying and trying. And I came home, and as I drove up the road, I screamed at the top of my lungs out the car door, I'm pregnant! I'm pregnant! <laughs> the neighbors thought I was nuts, but I didn't really care. Um, they were real nuts. I took out an ad in the newspaper. I always told Joe, if I ever got pregnant, that's exactly what I was going to do. Um, I don't think I ever paid for but <laughs> <laughs> it was there. We have five of the most amazing young people to have ever walk this earth. Three of them just graduated today with highest honors, even though that was not announced. Um, <laughs> you guys have incredible talent. You have incredible intellect. You have incredible hearts. And you are going to go amazing places. And you have touched these people. Kayla, who has left already, but she talked to me in the office the other day and said, I love your kids. They have all taught, they're squirrely and they're crazy and they drive us nuts, but they have all taught me something. And it brought me to tears. I'm guessing that there's not a lot of parents that go in and another student will say that to them about their kids. This is really hard on my heart because my five children are my heart. And when James left, it was extremely difficult. August is going to be extremely difficult. 2023 will be extremely difficult. <laughs> But you guys will all come home. Maybe there will be grandchildren at some point. In time. <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> I said maybe. Thank you, Scott. But I cannot tell any of you how much of my heart goes with you every single time you go out of that driveway. And I am so proud of all of you. Cranky. Yes, you too. <laughs> and I am so thankful to everybody in this yard, standing here, who has been with us and will continue to be with us, and we are here for you too. So, to you three, and to James, and to Frankie, we thank you. Thank you.